We're at Jesse's Hacker House, and I think we found the most complex problem that anybody's working on. <laughs> can you can you tell me like what, what is this? I I simply have no idea. This is harder than software. <laughs> Does anybody actually know what this is called? It's called an autism stimulation device. I'm Jesse. I uh, run the Jesse's Hacker House that some of you may know. Jesse's Hacker House is about bringing the most genuine, capable, scrappy, resourceful hackers who are interested in similar topics to become friends with each other, to have really intellectually stimulating conversations with each other, and potentially become collaborators in the future. I tricked everyone. Everyone thought I was going to come to UCC to run it, but it turns out that I was it didn't work out, so I had to stay in New York City and run the house remotely. I am quite proud of our achievement because the ECC Hacker House was our largest and most decentralized operation ever. Largest being we had four houses, 10 days max, hosted 40 hackers, working with 28 companies, you know, like ran 13 events and all of that without me being there. Thankfully, because we had friends. This is the Rust house. Rust is a programming language. It's a systems language, so it's compiled, it's low level, compared to like Python, more interpreted. I'd say the really nice thing about Rust, it has this beautiful abstraction over memory with something called the borrow checker, which is like the secret sauce of the Rust compiler. Uh, a lot of people are kind of intimidated by it. I think the borrow checker actually teaches you how to be a better engineer the more that you use it. It's popular amongst a lot of uh, projects that utilize a lot of cryptography. They like its memory safety properties. We host four houses. In this house in particular, we hosted a lot of residents uh, in the Rust ecosystem, the Rust Ethereum ecosystem. And uh, that's why this house is the Rust house. <laughs> It seems like we're almost doing a bit of like an Ethereum refactor in some way. Like there is there is a core group of people and then a widespread group of contributors that are like really working pretty hard to make sure the tooling built around the Ethereum blockchain is like as good as it can be. And I think that's going to allow developers to just have a much cleaner foundation to work off of. Having something kind of rebuilt, so Alloy being like a rebuild of Ethers, after we've all gotten so much more knowledge and how this stuff works and maybe should work, uh, I, I think is what I call this like refactor. So it's, you know, kind of, at least on the rough side of things, like laying new groundwork for, you know, future developers to come, you know, take a look at, to build on top of, and to have something that's hopefully easier to use, more modular, and just more efficient. I feel actually very fortunate that I, I've kind of joined in when I have because it's almost like a, you know, a renaissance and seeing this stuff being built, you know, very cleanly and from the ground up again. Yeah, so we're at uh, Jesse's Hacker House. This is the Rust Hacker House. And um, there's, you know, just a lot of different people here. We have technical people, we have business people. Have you heard of the Solana Saga? No. So they, they, they released a uh, Web3 phone? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't it like a, just like an Android phone with like a wallet on it? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you want to see the Solana Saga? What do we got here? Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is pretty good. I, I would pay a lot of money for this. Yeah. 
Just be just be careful with the shards. Oh, okay. Well, this is. Actually, I think it's this sharding. Is really, this is <laughs> this is actually really secure, because um, you can't actually access the private key. So it's like a it's like an offline signing wallet. Well, we tried to look inside to, to see where all the where all the coins were. Well, let me let me try and find the uh, the, the hidden private uh, the seed. This is actually a QR code, and if you if you combine these two QR codes together, it actually. Um, and you hash them together using there's there's another there's another QR code right there. So you put them all together, and it actually you use their own. Uh, they actually roll their. I personally, I'm in crypto for the engineering. When I go to main events, when I go to stage talks, I find there to be a lot of busyness. There's a lot of free things. There's a lot of noise. What I've started to optimize for time with engineers to just be like the dumbest person in the room. That's my goal. And you learn like real applicable skills that that aren't locked into. You don't have skill lock in with a project or an SDK or a language. You like have knowledge lock in of like, you know, you learn math. Math is never changing. Math isn't a project. Math doesn't run out of funding. My favorite part of the Hacker House has been actually all the deep dives we've gone into math and, and cryptography here. So it was like two nights in a row where it was, we were up till like 1 a.m. on the floor here with whiteboards and uh, doing elliptic curves and elliptic curve pairings and you know not a lot of showing off or uh, knowledge flexing has been happening here. It's just been a ton of teaching, a ton of knowledge transfer, and uh, we're all making each other sharper. Here we're basically building an environment for builders and engineers to like really go deep and have community. I think most people who's an engineer in the ecosystem is like working on very niche technology. And in general, when you work on very niche technology, it's like, really difficult to have a community or talk to anybody about your work <laughs> and so I think the sense of community has been really good for that at least for me personally and I hope for all the residents here as well. I think it's always difficult and a little existential to like you know parse what information is like super quality and so we're, we kind of in general use these houses as kind of like a filter for just like really high quality discourse, you know, because the industry is pretty chaotic and there's a lot of noise everywhere. If you're, you know, looking to be a part of the network, whether you're a builder, you want to get to know other builders, whether you have more ideas on restaking, how do you, like, what new services can be enabled by that? And, you know, like, generally, if you just want to, like, access me as a resource, feel free to, you know, like, check out WeHack247. Excited to meet friends who are still sticking through it, even though it's a bear market. Hopefully, you can build something really interesting for the next cycle.